going to show you how to make this adorable boho crossbody bag. It's got this inner lining, which I'm going to show you in a different video so that this video isn't too long. I'm going to be using four colors, the four that you see right here, and I'll link everything in the description box below. You're also going to need a 25 millimeter bead or a 32 millimeter button or any bead or button that you would like to use. But this is what I'm going to be using today. You're also going to need a 9mm hook and any size 6 super bulky weight yarn. I'm going to be using two different brands. Again, I'll be listing it in the description box for you. I'm going to be using Line Brand Hometown and Yarn Bee True Colors. They are both a size 6 super bulky weight yarn. To begin, we are going to chain 4 and slip stitch into the first chain to create a ring. Now you could use the magic ring, I just don't like it. Now we're gonna work inside this ring and we're gonna begin round one into that ring. Chain four. This will count as our first double crochet plus chain one. Now we're going to make two double crochet followed by a chain one five times within this ring. So make two double crochet. Followed by a chain one. And we're gonna do that five times, so that's one time. So now we're going to make two more double crochet. Chain one. So we have two there. We need three more. So here you should have five. So go ahead and count and make sure that you have five of those two double crochet groupings. And then we've just got this one by itself. So we need to add one more double crochet to partner that first double crochet that we made with our chain. And then you're gonna slip stitch into the third chain. See, that counts as one of those groupings. So you should have six groupings total of two double crochet followed by a chain one space. So now we're done with round one. So you're gonna go ahead and cut your yarn. And I wanted to show you real quick that you need to weave in your tails. I weave in this tail especially good so that that hole doesn't open up. So as you can see, I'm just going underneath the stitches. All right, now we're gonna start round two and you can start in any chain one space. So join your new color there and we're going to chain four. This will count as a double crochet and a chain one space. make two more double crochet in the same space. Now we're going to move to the next chain one space. And we're going to make two double crochet followed by a chain one and two more double crochet all in the same space. 
And we are actually going to repeat that in every chain space around. So you're going to have two double crochet, a chain one, and two more double crochet in each chain space around. So you're just going to repeat that around and I'll meet you at the end. So here we are at the end. This is where we started and this is double crochet by itself. So we need to add a double crochet to our first chain space that we started in. And now we're going to slip stitch into the third chain of our beginning chain four. Now do not fasten off. We're going to continue on to the next round. We're going to slip stitch into the next chain space. And now we're going to chain three. And this chain three will count as a double crochet. You're going to put six more doubles in that same chain space. We're going to make our petals in this round. So this is what it should look like. It should be a grouping of seven doubles. And you're just going to repeat that in every chain space around. So just put seven double crochet in each chain space around. And again, this is going to create our petals. So just continue doing that in every chain space around and I will meet you at the end. So here we are at the end. We're just going to slip stitch into the top of the third chain of our beginning chain. And now you're going to cut your yarn. and weave in your tails. I do like to weave them in as I go. Now we're going to join in any of the first double crochet of the groups of seven. So look for a group of seven and just pick the first double crochet that you come to. We're gonna join in that stitch there. Now we're gonna chain one and single crochet in all seven of those doubles. Once you do that, you're going to look for the space between clusters, two rounds below. And you're gonna insert your hook there and make a spike stitch. This is a single crochet stitch, but it's called a spike stitch because you're going two rounds below. So pull your loops up tall, and then you're just going to continue on. Make a single crochet in the next seven stitches. And again, we're going to make that single crochet spike stitch two rounds below. And you're just going to repeat this process all the way around, making seven singles followed by that spike stitch two rounds below. 
So just keep doing that all the way around, and I'll meet you at the end. Don't forget that last spike stitch. I've done that several times. And then slip stitch into the first stitch to join. And then we're going to change color, so go ahead and cut your yarn and weave in all your tails. Now we are going to find any group of seven and then only counting those single crochet in the seven, you're going to count up four stitches. So essentially just right there in the center of the cluster there, and then we're going to join in that stitch. So you're going to chain four, and this will count as a double crochet, chain one. And then we're going to put another double crochet in that same exact stitch. This is going to give it the hexagon shape. So it's sort of a corner. Each corner, so to speak, is going to make a double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Now we're going to double crochet in the next seven stitches until we reach the middle of the next petal. Once you have those seven doubles, this is what it should look like. Now we're going to make another corner, and that is just a double crochet, chain one, double crochet, all in the same stitch. And so you're just going to repeat that process. We're going to double crochet in the next seven stitches. And this is what it should look like. So you're just going to repeat to end double crochet, chain one, double crochet. So that's our corner stitches all in the same stitch, followed by seven doubles. And you're just going to continue repeating that until you reach the end where we started. So there should be a corner stitch, seven doubles, corner stitch seven doubles and you're just going to repeat that. So here we are at the end, you're going to count up to the third stitch and slip stitch to join. Now we're done with this round, so you can go ahead and cut your yarn and then of course weave in all your tails. As you can see, it gave it a hexagon shape. So now we are going to make one more motif identical to this one. So you're going to follow those same rounds one more time so that you have two of these. And I'll meet you back here once you have all of those done. So here I have two identical motifs, and this is going to make the front and back of our purse body. So we're going to place the wrong sides together and then you need to line up your stitches and your motif so that the flat parts of the motif are at the top and bottom and then this point here is on the sides. 
and then you're going to count down six stitches on each side and mark those stitches. I will admit that I wish I had done five instead of six, but I didn't want to confuse people, so I just went ahead and said six because that's what I did. But I do wish that I had marked the fifth stitch instead of the sixth. Now you're just going to mark through both layers there and you're going to repeat it to the opposite side. And then of course you're going to count down six stitches or five if you would like your mouth of your bag to be slightly less large. And so this will be the mouth of the bag where you put your belongings. So now we're going to join around the bottom through both layers. So I'm going to insert my hook into that first mark stitch on the left and chain one, which that chain one will not count as a stitch. And then going through both layers, you're going to half double crochet until you reach that chain space where our corner of our hexagon is. This yarn splits very easily and I hate it. So that's why I have to work so slowly. So here we are at that chain space. In that chain space, we're going to work a half double crochet, followed by a chain one, and another half double crochet. So we're basically making that same corner stitch, only we're using half doubles. Now the concept is very easy. So you're just going to half double crochet in each stitch until you reach the chain one spaces. And when you reach the chain one spaces, you're going to create those corner stitches, which is a half double crochet, chain one, half double crochet. So those are the only places that you are going to be increasing. And that way we can keep the shape of the bag the same. But you're just going to continue this stitch pattern until you reach the other stitch marker. I'm not going to show you each and every step. Once you reach the other stitch marker, I will meet you there. So here I'm at the last mark stitch and I'm actually going to have double through both of those layers there. Now we're going to work through just the layer facing us. And this is again going to be the mouth of the bag, so we need it to be open. So I'm just going to continue the stitch pattern, but only through one layer. So you are going to continue making half doubles in every stitch until you reach a chain one space. And then of course, when you reach that chain one space, you're gonna make your corner stitches to keep the shape of the back. And again, those corner stitches are half double, chain one, half double. So you're just gonna do that until you reach where we began. So here we are, I'm going to make a half double in that last stitch. And this is what it should look like so far. And this is actually where we begin our round. And we're going to make an invisible slip stitch. So just watch me carefully. I'm bringing my loop to the back of my work, essentially, so that I can continue to use my working yarn on the other side. So now I'm turning my work. And I'm going to continue working along this side of the motif. So I'm just going to half double all the way till I reach my next chain space. This side will be different because we're going to add our button loop to this side. So be sure to stay for those instructions. I'm working my way up until the next chain space, and then I'm going to make my corner stitches. 
And then before I move much further, I'm going to show you, you want to make your button loop at the halfway point. So just take a look at your stitches here and your button loop should be in that center stitch. So I'm going to half double crochet until I meet that center stitch and then I'm going to create my button loop. Which it should be five half doubles there. And then you're going to chain nine for your button loop if you're using the same size button. If you're using a smaller button or a larger button, you want to go ahead and grab your button and make sure it's the right size. So this is just big enough for the button that I'm going to be using. And here I'll show you. It should be just big enough to go around. You don't want it to be too loose. And I'm going to close the loop by slip stitching through the front loop only in the first bar of my half double crochet. So just watch me carefully. This is the front loop. And then here's that first bar. And I'm just going to slip stitch to close that button loop. And now I'm just going to continue following the stitch pattern until I reach the end. And of course, that's just a half double in each stitch until you get to a chain one space and then make those corner stitches in the chain one space. So here we are at the end, and you could slip stitch to join, but I want it to look in, like seamless. So I'm going to make an invisible join. So you're just going to cut your yarn, and you're just going to pull your yarn all the way through. This is not what you would normally do. And then I'm going to thread my yarn needle, and I'm going to go under that first stitch, under the bars of the first stitch there. And then I'm going to go back a stitch and go underneath that stitch. And then I'm going to go through the back loop only of my last stitch. And as you can see, it looks very seamless. And then I'm going to knot it on the inside and weave in my tails so that it doesn't show up. And again, I'm lining this bag so it's not going to show up. It's not a big deal. So now we're going to add our button before we move on. I'm going to use the same color as that round there. And because it's so thick, I'm going to split it in half. I'm actually going to use both of these halves. I'm going to use this half to sew my button on. And then I'm going to use the other half later. And you'll see how we're going to use it. And I'm just going to tie these in a knot several times. And you can weave them in if you would like. But if you're going to line your bag like I am, you can just kind of leave them in the inside. It's, it's really up to you. I'm going to line mine though like this so it's not going to show. So I'm just going to cut the ends and hide them later in the lining. So before we go any further, we need to add our lining. If you're adding a lining, you need to do that now. And I've made that a separate video. So you can either just click the link above or look in the description box. And this is what it'll look like after you add the lining. It's very easy to do, so be sure to check out that video. So now we're going to add the strap. I'm using a Romanian cord, if you're familiar with that. I'm going to leave a long tail for sewing purposes, and then you're going to chain two. Now you're going to go in that first stitch there. In that loop, pull up a loop, and essentially we're making a single crochet. Now we're going to turn the stitch and working through that other loop of your chain stitch, you're going to make another single crochet. This is only how you start.
And now we are just going to work through those two horizontal bars there. So you're going to turn your work, and there's two horizontal bars right there. And you're going to make a single crochet. Make sure you do it loosely, or you're going to hate yourself. Turn it, work through those two horizontal bars there. Single crochet. I'm going to show you one more time. Turn it. Go through those two horizontal bars right there. And single crochet. And you're just going to continue doing that until it measures the length that you want. I want mine to be about 43 inches in length or 109 centimeters. And I will say this stretches a lot. Once you get the desired length, you're going to go through those two horizontal bars and then just slip stitch to finish it off. And then I'm going to fasten off, leaving myself a long length of tail to sew it to the bag. And I'm just going to show you right quickly where you want to sew it. I'm not going to show you how to sew it. So right there, I'm going to sew my strap to the bag on both sides. Make sure your strap isn't twisted. So now we're going to make our fringe. I love to use this DVD case because it's got that gap right there for my scissors to go in. So I'm just going to make one piece of fringe per stitch around the bottom, which is about 33 stitches. So I'm wrapping my DVD case 33 times and I'm going to cut the bottoms. And as you can see, this makes it so much easier when there's that little gap there. And then I'm just going to start at that top corner. And using the Lark's Knot, I'm going to add a piece of fringe per stitch. And you're just going to do that to the other corner underneath the straps. I wanted to show you one more trick that I use all the time, whether my fringe is wrinkled or not. If your fringe is wrinkled, it can ruin the look of your bag. So I've got this, this flat iron, and I've got it on a medium setting, which is it's actually really low. I think it's like on number 12. And I'm just going to take a quick sweep over my fringe. This just makes it look super professional. And it doesn't matter if it's wrinkled or not. I do this every time. And as you can see, it makes it look really nice. So I like to add a tassel to my button. You can do it or you can leave it off. It's really up to you. But I just wrap my fingers five times with the color of your choice. And then I grab the button loop and open it up and then just take the ends, all the ends through one side and then fold it in half. It doesn't matter if it's perfect, I'm going to cut it even later. And then with the other half of my yarn that I split, I'm going to make the gathering knot to hold that tassel in place. So just make a loop. Set it over the area that you want to attach it to. And then wrap it as many times as you feel comfortable. For me, it's usually about five times. And then you're going to take the end and go through the loop that you left yourself at the beginning and pull on both ends and that'll bring that knot underneath the area where you wrap make it look really seamless and then you're just going to cut the ends and i'm going to cut them evenly i do recommend since this is going to get a lot of wear and tear that you get some fray check and 
put a little dab on the ends of your tassel. And it, it comes in most craft stores, but I like to put it on the ends of my tassel and on my fringe if I know it's going to get a lot of wear and tear. But otherwise, you are done. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial today. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching.